Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today, Republican Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio is even further from being Speaker of the House than he was yesterday. In a second floor vote, Jordan ended up with 199 supporters, a net loss from yesterday's tally. As Paul Kane of The Washington Post noted, Jordan set a modern record. Nice work, Jim. Earning the lowest vote tally for a majority's nominee to be Speaker. Now, Jordan did pick up three new supporters today, but he lost four members who flipped away from him this time around. In total, 22 Republicans voted for someone other than Jordan, and he can only afford to lose four. So the congressman from Ohio has a lot of work ahead of him if he's going to convert enough votes to win the gavel. Jordan is not giving up. Tonight, he told reporters the House will vote again tomorrow afternoon and will keep voting as long as necessary. In the meantime, the House remains paralyzed on its 15th day without a speaker. The longest vacancy in more than half a century, and that last gap in 1971 only occurred because Congress actually convened rather late in January. Of course, we are stuck in the current debacle because of the fundamental deepening chaos in the House Republican Caucus. At this point, it really does feel like they are a malfunctioning Roomba vacuum cleaner, hopelessly stuck in the corner, ramming into the wall over and over again. Its sensor's gone haywire. But they keep going. I mean, the current path is pretty clearly not working. Jim Jordan is 18 votes away from majority. And the thing is, not exactly a unifying figure. He's an extreme far-right coup plotter. And the politics of voting for someone like that are not going to change in 24 hours for the people that hold out from voting for them and are in vulnerable seats. Now, the pressure campaign to bully those members into voting for him from Jordan, from Donald Trump, from Fox News, hasn't worked. It's failed so far. If the Republican Party does not want to keep ramming into the wall, embarrassingly, in front of the entire nation and world over and over and over again, they need to change direction. They could find someone else to be the nominee for speaker, although choosing a nominee the caucus can get behind, obviously easier said than done, as we're seeing. Or they could compromise with Democrats. It would only take five Republicans meeting with Democratic leadership to craft some sort of deal and elect minority leader Hakeem Jeffries to the speakership. Or, if they don't like that, which I suspect they don't, choose someone else, even a Republican, under some kind of agreed-to power-sharing pact. So far, they don't seem willing to do that. Another option that some people have been floating would be to expand the role of the temporary speaker, Patrick McHenry. At the moment, under the current House rules, his powers are essentially ministerial, basically limited to gaveling in and out until a permanent speaker is elected. But the New York Times reports Republican David Joyce of Ohio has been circulating a bipartisan plan that would give McHenry the power to run the House floor through early January. Members of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, made up of center leaving members from both parties, have also been involved in the talks. Two former House speakers, uh, interestingly, Newt Gingrich and John Boehner, endorsed the plan last night. Now, to be clear, first of all, no one even knows how this would work precisely. You'd have to change rules. Elevating McHenry would be completely unprecedented, as far as anyone can tell. It also would not solve the underlying problem of the Republican Party set on sowing chaos, as Hakeem Jeffries laid out this afternoon after a Democratic caucus meeting. Can you talk to me about the point of this caucus meeting? Is it just to take the temperature on McHenry? There are two things that were important for us to accomplish this week. First, stop Jim Jordan, who is a clear and present danger to our democracy and the poster child for Republican extremism. The second is to reopen the House so we can do the business of the American people. And our preference is to reopen the House in a bipartisan way so we can govern in an enlightened way moving forward. Does that mean McHenry is a path? This conversation will not be about any one individual because we're concerned about two things, the institution of the Congress 
and the best interests of the American people. I, I got to say, the Patrick McHenry plan speaks so perfectly to the trajectory of the Republican Party. Back in 2005, McHenry was a freshman congressman. He was a firebrand, one of the furthest right members of the party. He was uh, profiled in magazines as such. 18 years later, McHenry is being floated as the institutional savior to rescue the Republicans from their latest iteration of hard right rebels. And this time around, that faction is so dangerous to American democracy and so strong within the Republican Party, they are threatening to bring the entire institution down on their own heads.